everybody. Good afternoon and welcome to this uh, great event, momentous occasion, on October 23rd, uh, 2017. Thank you all for, uh, for being here. I'd like to ask the American Legion Honor Guard to present the colors. Color Guard, red, cut. Right color, on. Forward, turn. Color Guard, hold. Order, hold. Left, peace. Color Bear, forward. Post the color. Present. You'll join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Order hung. Color bears recover. Left, peace. Port, on. Forward, hurt. Color guard, hold. Water, hold. All out. Thank you. Please be seated. We, um, Gathered here at three o'clock to the rescue. I got the, got it. Yeah. Got it. We uh, kind of battled back and forth this morning with the wind and the cool and the clouds and. And, and what we were going to do about this. And uh, now we stand uh, and, and look, and those uh, four stars are shining in the afternoon sun on October 23rd, 2017, right here in Cape So just a wonderful, wonderful day. We are gathered uh, this afternoon, and thank you all for being here, to recognize four-star general and a Cape Girardeau native, Seth McKee, and his family. We have uh, enjoyed uh, observing and, and reminiscing with this wall, the Wall of Fame, as we have gone through the years. And now, today, we're dedicating one of our own, a Cape Girardian, one of our own great Missourians, General Seth McKee. And it's just a great, great afternoon to be here and thank you all for uh, for being a part of this. I want to recognize uh, a few people and, and, and so forth before we get the uh, speaker list started. Um, first of all, I, uh, council, I saw uh, Danny Esner back here. Uh, is there another council uh, here that I missed in the crowd? I see City Manager Scott Meyer uh, back here. Uh, Scott, thank you for being here. Uh, the chamber, I see several of the chamber staff here, the chamber oh, conference. Uh, so thank you for, uh, for their attendance. Artist Craig Thomas, he was going to be here, I haven't seen him. It's, hey, Craig, the artist, give him a hand. Uh, uh, this wall and, and, and everything up and down the murals, not only on the wall, but the uh, uh, throughout the city of Cape Girardeau. So, Craig, thank you, uh, thank you so much. Wanted to recognize you separately. 
uh, visit CAPE and CVB. I see uh, Brenda Newburn, uh, their support, logistics, and, and, and walking us and working us through uh, through this process as we've gone through the year. Uh, Old Town CAPE, Marla Mills, uh, Director Don Dower, I saw, President right now, and Don Greenwood. I saw Don Greenwood back here as, as the uh, Chairman of our uh, mural committee has worked through the years uh, diligently on, on murals. Don, thank you so much for for all of that. I thank Burlington Northern. You wouldn't think a railroad would have so much to do with uh, this mural, but they, but they did. And um, so somebody said, well, can you stop the trains while we're going through this process? Well, commerce moves on. So. Um, so far, so good. But if one comes, incidentally, if one comes by, we'll just pause, okay, and let commerce proceed, and we'll we'll go on. But hopefully, we'll be through that. But they uh, they were very uh, good to work with uh, as we went through on a safety thing with the artist and so forth. We have to pay attention to that. Uh, but we thank uh, Burlington Northern, and of course, all the rest of our staff and our our uh, city council and and so forth that worked uh, throughout the year. I remember when. Uh, some of the McKee family came to City Council uh, back about the start of the year and started this process. So it's been a, a year's process, uh, and it's great uh, today that it can, it can come to fruition. So at this point, I'd like to introduce uh, son, Jeff McKee. Uh, he's got, uh, it will introduce the balance of the family, and then there are several uh, uh, of the McKee family that want to say a few words. And I'll let them do that. So, Jeff, uh, thank you for being here. Jeff McKee, son of Seth. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, everybody, for coming today. We really appreciate this. As my father would say, as an old fighter pilot, we have a beautiful day here in the military. They actually call this a CAVU day. C-A-V-U, clear and visibility unlimited. That's exactly the type of weather that fighter pilots love because they can go up and turn in the sky all they want to. But I'm going to make my comments short because we have a lot of speakers here today and uh, we've got a lot of people that we want to acknowledge since uh, this has been done. I do want to say though it is very appropriate that uh, my father was put between Mark Twain and General uh, Bradley, my father appreciated and respected all of the older senior officers that he learned from in his career, and my father was an avid reader, so being next to Mark Twain is very appropriate. It's a real honor that Cape Girada has put him on their wall of fame. As everybody knows, my father was from Cape. He wasn't born here, but he considered this his home. His military records stated this as his home of record. He grew up here, went to high school here, went to college here, and this is where he actually joined the military and started his career. Uh, he actually started as a Lance Corporal, though. It's been several ranks since then, since he had been at that rank. But um, there's more people that are going to be speaking here. I just want to thank everybody for coming today, and we appreciate your attendance. Thank you. Now I'd like, now I'd like to introduce my mother, Sally Parshall McKee, who's very shortly going to be 93 years old. <laughs> Introduce your brother. Tom will be next. I'll introduce him next.
Well, I'm very happy and proud, of course, to be here today. It uh, is such an honor. And to see Seth on the wall has fulfilled all of our dreams in the McKee family. And uh, uh, let's see, I uh, wrote down just a few notes. Uh, uh, you can hold both those, okay. Uh, let's see. Oh yes, I uh, first wanted to start with the Pat McKee family because Pat and Seth were very close brothers and uh, Pat worked very hard years ago, years ago, to try to get his brother on the wall along with Jody. And uh, so I would like to start and, and thank Jody and to thank Pat, who's in heaven, I'm sure. He was so good. <laughs> and uh, then uh, their children. There's Tammy and Rod Holzhauser, and they too have strived and worked relentlessly to see that their Uncle Seth would get on the world, the, the wall of honor, and they did. And right behind Tammy was Brad and Marion, and they were really hard wall workers. It, it was amazing how much this family put into it, and I appreciate it so much, and I know your Uncle Seth does too. And, and then our youngest son, Tom McKee, he and his wife also joined Tammy and Brad and worked very hard to see that his father was put on this wall. And so I just want to thank that family so much and our son and I want to wish him a happy birthday. Yeah. Today is the 23rd, and I think he'll remember this one forever to be here to celebrate his father on the wall. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Tom. Happy birthday to you. I would like to say, you know, things can't be done by just a family. And so they, they called on a lot of people that really got the ball rolling. And I would like to thank Mayor Rediger. And where is he now? Oh, there you are. I appreciate so much, sir, what you have done. My pleasure. And uh, I would certainly like to thank the American Legion, these gentlemen. It's amazing what they have done. And, and they do every time, every day for people in our country. These wonderful elderly veterans who I cherish. And so thank you to the American Legion. And then there's still more people that helped. Isn't that wonderful? What a, what a community can do. And uh, then there is, uh, I have, uh, let's see. Oh yes, uh, Tony Kohler and Peter Kender, and Peter I have just met, <coughs> yes, and uh, I have met Tony Kohler before. Oh, good Tony, I see you. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And uh, 
also I have saved uh, well something for the last here and it's not the last because I do want to read something after that but you know my husband Seth the general could not have gotten on that wall without the help of a great artist and I have a special place in my heart for artists because our oldest son <laughs> is a renowned artist and sculptor and I'm so proud of his work but I do want to thank Craig Thomas and uh, Don uh, Greenwood you both you both where are you job and you know I I saw your picture when you were on the scaffold and most artists as they work they like to step back and see what they've done what they can add or what they can miss and uh, I don't know how you manage that on a scaffold <laughs> and uh, truly to to look at a big eye and see how you have made his eyes so beautiful. And <clears throat> so I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. And, and then, as the train, you had to manage your timing with the train. But do you know what I think about that train? I think it's really a nice thing it comes. Because Seth's father was a railroad engineer and I think his father comes by every day to say hello <laughs> so, uh, and then uh, in in closing uh, Seth was deputy assistant chief of staff oh I must mention uh, not mention I must tell you about General Robertson, who is now commander of NORAD, and of course that was Seth's last command. Robinson. 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 And you know, the military, they have so much respect for one another, so much love, so much pride. She said she absolutely had to come to his funeral. I don't think she had ever met Seth. She was so much younger. Seth retired in 73 from NORAD. That was his last command. But she and her husband, who was a retired lieutenant general from the Marine Corps. Oh, was he Air Force? Well, let's not give the Marine Corps credit. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, the two of them flew out from Colorado Springs purposely, of course, to attend the funeral. And she was so pleased and proud to be there. And when our three sons and our eight grandchildren, our three sons and their spouses and our eight grandchildren and their uh, husbands and wives, uh, spouses, they uh, and the gra great grandchildren, which were nine, two of them were too young to attend, but we had seven there, and they all got out and walked behind the caisson, and General Robertson, Robinson. I don't, I, I spelled it with a T, that's the problem. <laughs> but anyway, she and her husband David got out of our coach and insisted, she said, no, I want to walk behind the general. And she did. And it was such a, a beautiful case on. As I recall, I saw a lot of black and red and and gold and and then there was red white and blue with his flag and there were six horses and one lead horse pulling this case on and then at the burial site 
General Robinson came over. I was sitting in a chair such as these, and she just knelt down in front of me and just whispered to me such wonderful, wonderful words about Seth and about me. And she just couldn't have been more gracious to the two of us. And uh, she was just showing how much love there was for the former <coughs> commander of NORAD. And I told her, I said, uh, General Robinson, I said, you know, I've sat in your chair. And she said, oh, I bet you have many times. <laughs> but it wasn't really many times, but I, I have sat there. And so, uh, where's that other envelope? Would you pull that, uh, no, the other, that card out? Uh, just a minute. Uh, as I think uh, I told you that Seth had been deputy director chief of staff at one time. And I received this very beautiful card with his flag on it from the chief of staff of the United States Air Force. And it said, says, on behalf of the men and women of the United States Air Force, the Chief of Staff of the United States Air Force, General David L. L. Goldfe Goldfein and his wife Dawn, that's something they've added more since I've retired, is adding, and the wife. <laughs> well, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing because we wives do a lot <laughs> and did a lot. <laughs> but, but I do have a beautiful framed certificate of uh, thankfulness from who was chief of staff then, uh, General Brown. And I, it's framed with the... Uh, 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 the United States seal on it. So he thanked me properly. But anyway, and so this says, and his wife Dawn uh, express. expressed deepest sympathy and uh, appreciation for faithful service to the United States Air Force and the nation. That's what they were thanking Seth for. a personal note that said our thoughts and prayers are, are with you and your family during this difficult time uh, Dave and Dawn so thank you all so very much you've added too to our family for coming today and uh, so it's been quite an honor to be able to speak to you Thank you, Mom. Oh, here's your glasses. I was going to keep my comments short because I didn't want to steal anybody's thunder, but uh, she did steal a little bit of my thunder. My next uh, person I'm going to be introducing here is my youngest brother, Tom McKee. And I was going to wish him a happy birthday then, but um, Mom beat me to the punch, as usual. <laughs> keep going, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Tom will have a few words to say to you here, and uh, then we'll uh, have a couple other speakers and uh, get on with the ceremony. Okay, you want to trade? I'll come up. Uh, go ahead. Thank you very much. Please be seated. Well, as Pop would say, uh, when you, you're the third one at bat and you're following your mom, he'd say, sit down, Tom. <laughs> so I'm going to do what Pop said, except I'm, since our brother Bill was not able to be here today, he and his wife Penny in Scottsdale 
a previous commitment they couldn't change, and my wife, Tricia, couldn't be here because of a little illness, but she's getting better. Thank you. I'm going to take Bill's slot. So I'm going to talk a little bit and uh, just a couple remarks. First, I want to address General of the Armies, John Pershing. General of the Army, Omar Bradley. Mayor Rediger, distinguished visitors and guests, ladies and gentlemen. General Seth J. McKee had happy days and sad days, both in peace and in war. Today's a happy day. It's the day that Cape Girardeau places him on the wall of fame next to Mark Twain and General of the Army, Omar Bradley. Pop would be honored and he'd be smiling. But I would be remiss if I didn't say I only wish this had occurred a few years ago so that he and his brother Pat could be here in the front row with their lovely brides, Mom and Aunt Jody, so they could enjoy this day as well. But that being said, we know they're both in heaven looking down on this glorious day and we have a lot to celebrate. So it's a happy day. You've already stole my thunder, Mom, because I was going to say he also smiled on this day 69 years ago. At least that's what you told me. <laughs> now, he had already had two fantastic sons, Jeff and Bill. And then I came along. He called me Thomasina for six months. <laughs> but I got over it. I don't have any issues. Because family was important to Pop, both immediate family and extended family. Although he traveled throughout his career as a military officer, it was Cape Girardeau area that he always called home. I remember the summers that we'd come back, come back to home in Cape and Scott City to visit all his family. His parents lived in Scott City, and he always looked forward to when his mom would give him the pulley bone. When we were stationed in Washington, D.C., and he was about to become the commander of U.S. Forces Japan in 1966, I had just graduated from high school, and he said, where do you want to go to college? I said, I really don't know. And he said, well, why don't you go to SEMO? It's in Cape Girardeau. It's where I'm from. We got a lot of family there, and while your mother and I are halfway around the world, you'll always be surrounded by family. And you could transfer in a couple of years, if you like. So I took him up on that, and I came to SEMO in the fall of 1966, but I never wanted to transfer. I fell in love with SEMO. I loved being around family. I loved having a place called home, like he did. And I loved finding my bride of 46 years here at SEMO. We have seven grandkids and they all know it started right here at Cape Girardeau. So it's a fitting, thank you. It's fitting to see Pop on the wall of fame in his hometown. There are a few folks that I want to recognize as well who were dedicated and persistent in making this happen. They've already been named, but Bill and I wanted to make sure we got our two cents in too. First, our late Uncle Pat McKee and Aunt Jody, who's here with us today. I remember Uncle Pat talking about this for many, many years. When Uncle Pat passed away a few days after my father passed away, I kind of thought this issue had gone away with them. Not to be. Our cousins Brad and Tammy and their families, along with great friend Tony Kohler, all continued the pursuit. And thanks to Mayor Rediger and the City Council, it became a reality and it became a cause that everyone wanted to join in. Then it came time to put the portrait on the wall. And as mom said, a special thanks to Craig Thomas and Don Greenwood. They did a great job of portraying Pop in such a distinguished manner. And oh, by the way, I heard that the General of the Army Bradley family was very happy that the insignia has been corrected on his uniform as well. Great job. This was a win-win situation. 
I saw General Bradley's headstone in Arlington National Cemetery last week when we buried Pop. Pop's close to the Air Force Memorial. It was a sad day, but soon to be followed by this day, a happy day, just like he used to have. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Yes, we, we do have a close attachment to Cape Girardeau here. Uh, like I said, I wasn't going to steal anyone's thunder, so I knew they were going to uh, thank the appropriate people and everything like that. But I'm also going to throw in that I've had three children that went to SEMO here also, and one of them on a football scholarship. <laughs> so we're, we're attached that way also. And the oldest that went to SEMO here, I came down here and swore him into the Air Force uh, from uh, ROTC here, and he retired as a lieutenant colonel from the Air Force. Anyway, uh, I'd like to go on now and introduce my cousin Brad McKee. Brad's been very instrumental along with Tony in uh, getting my father up here on the wall. Thank you, Brad. I'm very proud of General McKee's many accomplishments and the part he played to keep our nation free. He took part in many historic and decisive battles, including D-Day, Battle of the Bulge, and many more. He always took time to answer questions that I had uh, about his role uh, during World War II and the many commands that he held after the war. He recounted times to me when he landed planes with an engine shot out when he had bullet and shell holes riveting his cockpit. And my uncle, to me, was like a history book. He helped shape our country's future. He knew world leaders and celebrities very well. He held our nation's security in his hands as commander of the United States forces in Japan, of the 5th Air Force, and as commander of NORAD. But the most important thing to me personally is that he is my uncle, he was my uncle Seth, a good family man, and he was my dad's big brother. He always considered Cape Girardeau his hometown. He graduated from Central, he attended SEMO before it was called SEMO, and no matter where he was stationed, he and Aunt Sally made annual trips to Cape. Over the years, he was involved in several Cape Girardeau community events and SEMO University festivities when he would return home. I remember one year when he was in his probably mid-90s, he was the Grand Marshal of the Homecoming Parade on a very cold day in a convertible. So uh, he was in exceptional health for his age. But on numerous occasions, he sent his plane to Cape for groups of community leaders, everyday citizens, and SEMO professors so that they could tour NORAD. And many of those people told my dad uh, through the years that that trip was among the best experiences of their lives. So, it is very fitting that General Seth McKee, a hometown hero, will have a permanent and visible place in our community for generations to come, both here on the wall and on the Freedom Rock in the North County Park. This is what my father, Pat McKee, wanted and dreamed about several years ago. I want to thank everyone who made his dreams come true. This really was a team effort. Thanks to the artists Don Greenwood and Craig Thomas who did a fantastic job. That really is a good likeness of my uncle. <clears throat> and to the Convention and Visitors Bureau and the veterans groups and to everyone who was responsible for coming up with the funding. Thanks to the many that I talked to over the last few years that agreed with me that General McKee deserves to be recognized and honored by our community. To Tony Kohler, who took it upon himself to see that General McKee would someday soon be pictured on the Wall of Fame after having met him a few years ago. And Tony talked to anybody that would listen to him about this. He did not give up. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> to 
former Lieutenant Governor Peter Kinder, whose letter to the editor and Facebook page that he devoted in support of this effort, and that generated a lot of support from the community. Thank you, Peter. And to Mayor Rediger, which I called him Harry for the first time today, I, I, don't, I guess I was nervous, but, uh, <laughs> but Mayor Harry Rediger, who took this effort on as a personal venture and gave it everything he had. He stated during a city, city council meeting that several of us attended that, yes, this was going to get done and that he wouldn't take no for an answer. Thank you, Mayor Rediger. <laughs> and thank you all of you for showing up today. We have another cousin here, my sweet cousin, Tammy Holhauser, and she'll have a few words to say. Thanks, Jeff. Honorable Mayor Rediger, City Councilman, and all of you that are here to pay your respects, thank you so much. It's such an honor to be here. And I just want to thank Mayor Rediger again. Like Brad said, we showed up at that council meeting, uh, the McKee family, we stood before him. and. Count, or, uh, Mayor Rediger, you have transformed the city into a beautiful city of sculptures. You've received national recognition for on various fronts. You've also received commendations for this wonderful wall of fame. But what I'll remember the most and what I am most grateful for is that night earlier in the year when the McKee family stood before you and pleaded almost <laughs> to put our uncle's portrait on the wall. And like Brad, I remember the quote. I remember you standing there because the family was elated to hear you finally say, under my watch, we'll do the right thing. We'll put the portrait on the wall. Thank you so much. And so today, this is a wonderful day for family and friends, for the whole city of Cape, and especially for our veterans. And I want to thank Adjutant Tom Giles and the American Legion, June Post 63, for their constant vigilance, too, in this matter. Always, yes. Always making sure that the general's portrait would be put on the wall. Tony, again, I have to thank you. Tony Kohler for, he was like our Paul Revere. He went around to everyone and alerted them, said, now's the time to make this happen. And so I want to thank you for that rallying spirit. It really made all the difference. Thank you. I also want to thank the artists, uh, Craig Thomas and Don Greenwood. That is a remarkable resemblance to Uncle Seth. We appreciate you sharing your talent once again for the people here in Cape. Um, and I want to thank my brother Brad. Brad, you, you just, I publicly, I've thanked him already, but you just worked along with Tony and you helped to get this publicized. And that was wonderful. And speaking of publicity, I want to thank the Southeast Missourian newspaper for all their great coverage, articles, polls, uh, letters to the editor, uh, everything they did. Also, KFES TV did a great job in covering this as well. So thank you. So we've had a lot of voices through the years as you've kind of realize this has been going on for a number of years and uh, a lot of what you call movers and shakers in the community and yes they all agreed we have to get that portrait on the wall but really nobody was able to do it and then came Peter Kinder we needed uh, we needed someone who was a popular leader in this community and Peter Kinder has been our state senator he also uh, served as our lieutenant governor for three terms very popular. So Peter, I want to thank you because your voice really did make a difference in all of this. <laughs> also, I'd like to thank Becky Cook. She's our former Secretary of State for the state of Missouri. She's moved away, but I want to thank her publicly for all of her efforts in the past. And like Tom said, I would be remiss too if I didn't mention the <coughs> oldest most dedicated and loudest voice of them all. And that was the voice of my dad, Pat McKee. Uh, dad passed away December last year, 
just three days after his brother, the general. And, uh, but Dad had started with, I guess back then it was called the mural committee, I'm not sure, uh, back in the 90s and everything. And he had appealed to them. He nominated Seth to have his portrait put on the wall. And after a few years, they got back with him. Yes, it had been approved. But he kept, you know, insisting, well, when is this going to happen? When more years passed by, and they sent him a letter, which I saw. And it said, the very next portrait that goes on this wall is going to be General McKee's. But then, guess what? The committee disbanded. It went defunct. And it hasn't been resurrected until now. This is a glorious day. <laughs> and I've come to realize that it was worth the wait because it was a perfect storm of voices all coming together in agreement and finally demanding that this was going to be the day to honor Cape's general, General Seth Jefferson McKee. Once again, I want to thank everybody for coming out today. Uh, on the McKee side there, that's uh, all the people that uh, we have that are planning on speaking today. I do want to say as time went along, it was really like Christmas or something. Every, every time I would open my email and there would be a new email from Brad or Tammy or somebody saying, it's getting closer, Pop's just about on the wall, we're doing this and that. And uh, those emails were a lot of fun to get. Thank you very much, Mr. Baird. Great comments from, uh, from the family. Uh, thank you much for being here. My connection back to the McGee family, Jody, uh, my late wife, Fran, and Pat taught together for uh, years uh, down at May Green School, teaching, uh, educating them, but really working to make those children become better citizens. We spent quite a bit of time together socially, but they were very, very dedicated and we enjoyed and they were, they were buddies, right? They were buddies. So that's my connection, my personal connection back to the, uh, to the McGee family. I also want to recognize uh, the uh, adjutant Tom Giles from American Legion uh, that was on my list. Uh, thank you much, much for all of your, uh, your support. I'd like to bring up now uh, Peter Kinder, personal friend of mine for years and years. Uh, it's been stated, state senator, long time, long time uh, a lieutenant governor, and uh, most recently uh, uh, has become the alternate federal co-chair of the Delta Regional Authority. Uh, we work as mayors up and down the river, 10 states, uh, about 80 mayors, uh, uh, promoting the river in so many ways. And, and, and one of our great partners is the Delta Regional Authority. So I was uh, more than pleased and excited when my friend Peter Kinder uh, was uh, nominated and is part of the Delta Regional Authority. I recognize my great friend right now, Peter Kinder. Mrs. McKee, Tom, Jeff, members of the McKee family, Mayor Rediger, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. What an honor it is for me, and what an honor you do me to allow me to share in this happy occasion. I was 15, trying to play football, trying to get through my sophomore year in high school when I first heard the general's name. I heard it from my father, who would have turned 100 at the end of August, and who was in high school here with General McKee. And he was on one of those trips. And I remember the pride that he and the other business leaders and civic leaders of Cape Girardeau felt as they boarded, I believe it was a DC-3, I'm not certain of that. This would have been about 1970 here at the airport to go out to Colorado Springs to experience his hospitality at NORAD. And I, I had explained to me what NORAD was the air defense of North America, built into the mountain at Colorado Springs to survive a direct nuclear attack. That this man, this great man, this great Missourian, this great native of our area, was in charge at the peak of the Cold War 
of the air defense of North America. And even for a knucklehead 15 year, 15 year old like me, that made a big impression at the time. And when I got back, uh, when my dad got back, I debriefed him, peppered him with a bunch of questions that probably annoyed him. I know some of you find that hard to believe, but I probably did. I doubt if there are many here today with us who were on one of those trips. But I know one was, Gary Rust was on one of those trips in 1970. Anybody else? Uh, I don't know that many others could be here because most of them have, uh, have not had the blessing of living quite as long as the general did. But he was always a point of pride and, and we talk about his being a son of Cape Girardeau, but really it is the greater Cape area. There was some growing up in what is now Scott City, I believe, right? It was not called Scott City then, it was Fornfelt and Ansel, I believe, uh, in years gone by, and, and then Ilmo. And there was a farm out at Whitewater, I believe, that was referenced in the funeral. And let me say what an honor it was 10 days ago to make the trek to the old post chapel at Fort Myer which is immediately adjacent to Arlington National Cemetery, and to show up at the appointed hour at 8.30, that gray overcast morning, and to go into that chapel for that funeral service. Uh, all the stirring trappings that a general officer is entitled to at his memorial service. The Air Force band playing outside. The Air Force chaplain conducting the service the three sons speaking so eloquently and so movingly, the horse-drawn caisson to which reference has already been made. And I was so delighted when I uh, arrived just right on the dot at 8.30 for the 9 a.m. service to find two other citizens of Cape Girardeau had made the trek there, uh, those being two who are with us today. Dr. Frank Nickel was there, who's done so much for the history of Cape. Frank deserves a round of applause. And, the, and of Southeast Missouri. And the other one was our friend, my friend, Jerry Ford. And Jerry has undertaken the big task of writing a book about the general. So I, I look forward to that, Jerry. I look forward to helping you promote that. Now, as to the artists, I think they caught uh, Mrs. McKee, if I may say so. I think they captured the fighting spirit and resolute character of the man, don't you? I think they did. Now, the finest words any audience can hear are in conclusion, right? <laughs> and I am, I think, concluding. But how do you pay tribute to such a man? Well, if you're a history buff and a Churchill buff like I am, you quote Churchill. Now, I've got to set the scene in the context. Hitler had conquered, conquered all of Europe, from the, nearly from the Urals, uh, to the uh, English Channel. He had, he had dashed Holland into ruin and slavery in a few weeks and dashed France into ruin and slavery in a few, in a few weeks. And he was threatening to invade the UK and he was sending his bombers night after night to wreak havoc all over our English-speaking cousins. And the point here is that the Brits, our English-speaking cousins, stood alone against this, against what Churchill called this hideous apparatus of aggression that Hitler had assembled. And so there was a new form of combat in the air. And Churchill did not believe that the citizens of the British Isles fully understood. They understood land combat from World War I and what was going on on the continent, but that he didn't believe that they fully understood the danger, the peril that the, the flyers were in. So he undertook to pay tribute with these words. He went to Parliament, to the floor of Parliament, and he said, I will pay my tribute to these young airmen. There never has been, I suppose, in all the world all the history of war, such an opportunity for youth. Then he looked back into distant history, he said, the Knights of the Round Table, 
the Crusaders all fall back into the past, not only distant, but prosaic. These gallant young men going forth every morn to guard our native land and all that we stand for, holding in their hands these instruments of colossal and shattering power, of whom it may be said that every morn brought forth a noble chance and every chance brought forth a noble knight, deserve our gratitude as do all the brave men who on so many way on so many days and on so many occasions are ready and continue ready to give life and all for their native land all our hearts churchill said all our hearts go out to the fighter pilots and the airmen never in the field of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few. We salute you, General. We're going to beat the. We're going to beat the train. Dad's coming by. This is like a flyby. <laughs> this is a flyby by Dad on rails. Great day, great day, and as the uh, as the uh, diesel passes, and as we conclude this, and recognize Mrs. McKee and, and the entire uh, McKee family and friends, and all of our citizens of Cape Girardeau, let that diesel pass. Let's all stand and salute and recognize General Seth McKee. would be welcome at the museum up on Independence for a uh, little reception and exhibit. Peter, again, thank you for your kind words of Churchill and your kind words of Peter Kimball. We are adjourned.